Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to investigate the current voltage characteristics of circuit components. And this is a required practical so it's important that you learn the details. In this practical we'll be looking at how the current through a component depends on the potential difference across the component. We're going to start by looking at a resistor and to do that we need to use this circuit. We've got a battery connected by wires to a resistor. The resistor is in series with an ammeter and a variable resistor. And finally, we've got a voltmeter in parallel across the resistor. First, we use the voltmeter to read the potential difference across the resistor. We then use the ammeter to read the current through the resistor. And we record these values in a table. Now we adjust the variable resistor and record the new readings on the voltmeter and the ammeter. We need to do this several times to get a range of readings. Next, we switch the direction of the battery. This means that the direction of the potential difference has now reversed. Both the voltmeter and the ammeter should now have negative values. And just like before, we continue taking several readings of potential difference and current. At the end, we plot a graph of the current against the potential difference like this. As you can see, we get a straight line passing through zero. This tells us that the current through a resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference. In other words, a resistor is an ohmic conductor. Also, if we change the direction of the potential difference, in other words, switch the direction of the battery, then we still get a straight line passing through zero. Now I should point out that we only see this if the temperature of the resistor is kept constant. If the resistor gets hot, then the graph will not have this shape. So it's important not to leave this circuit connected for too long, or the temperature of the resistor might increase. OK, we're now going to repeat this experiment, but using this circuit instead. As you can see, we've now replaced the resistor with a filament lamp. So just like before, we adjust the variable resistor and read both the potential difference and the current. And we do this for a range of values with the battery in the forward and the reverse direction. In the case of a filament lamp, we get a graph like this. In this case, the current is not proportional to the potential difference. That's because when the current increases, the temperature of the filament lamp increases, and the increased temperature causes the resistance to increase. You'll notice that we get the same shape if we change the direction of the potential difference. OK, we're now going to do the experiment using a diode. I'm showing you the circuit here. As you can see, we now have a diode in the circuit, and you'll notice we also have an extra resistor. That's because diodes are very easily damaged by a high current. The extra resistor will keep the current relatively low and protect the diode. Now, because the current will be low, we need a very sensitive ammeter. Scientists call this a milliammeter. So again, we adjust the variable resistor a number of times and record the potential difference and current. And we do this with the battery in the forward and reverse direction. We get a graph shaped like this. As you can see, in the case of a diode, we only get a current when the potential difference is around 0.6 to 0.7 volts. As the potential difference increases beyond this point, the current rises sharply. Secondly, with a diode, we get no current if the potential difference is reversed. That's because in the reverse direction, a diode has a high resistance. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.